Hey, Marcus Conti, former sanitation enforcement agent, city of New York, now investigative journalist, wiping out corruption, starting right where I live, starting from where I am, right inside the Department of Sanitation after getting fired and exposing the corruption and continuing to expose that sort of corruption. So today I want to talk about a, another, I got, I'm just going to flush out a lot of these write-ups. Here's one that comes our way. This is a fascinating one right here. Now, before we before I go into it, I want to preface it, and I'm going to try to be as polite as I can to the uh, to, to the agent uh, to the uh, writing aid the agent who associate agent who wrote the supervisor who wrote the ticket. Her name is Miss Fleetwood, but th this is going to be difficult because um, okay. So I had uh, prior to being written up by this individual. I had um, I had written a kind of a private letter to to the uh, the administrators, and I I had noticed uh, I had noticed what appears to be intoxication of, of, by the supervisor, and um, you know it was like it was the it wasn't the drunken kind it was the more like a, you know was, you ever see them on the subway yeah you do glassy eyes like dry throat um, and then you know they start to walk they start to walk that way and then it, it's like they stop and forget where they were going and they say oh I was going that way you know that that kind of um opioid uh intoxication and this particular uh supervisor had said that she was in a car accident and it was clear that there was some pills going on, some kind of medication, some kind of opioid medication. So unfortunately, that's how I have to preface this because that's where the, the write-up is coming from, right? So let's go right into it. So um, so there I was one day, I was, uh, I was out patrolling and I wrote a ticket, right? And I come across uh, a violation. I, I couldn't really even tell you what the violation was. I don't remember. But I call in on the radio as usual. I call in on the radio and I ask for help in, in uh, oh, what happened was, that's right, the handheld device, right, went down, right, it, it broke, right, it was at the end of the day and the handheld device, you keep trying to write the ticket and it won't work, so what do you have to do in that situation, you have to call the supervisor and you have to have permission to write a paper summons, right, we don't do it often, this is maybe the first or second time I ever had to write a paper summons, because it was always electronic, so I call um, my uh, lovely, um, Supervisor Miss Fleetwood, and this is uh, July. This is right after the EEO stuff, right? And Mr. Peppy is in the background, the guy that can't stand me, that's trying to stick the knife in my back the whole time. He's a week later, he gets pushed into retirement, but he's fought, he's pushing Fleetwood to do a write up. So this is the write up that they got that day, and we'll go right over his, his slide one, right? So what I was doing was basically. Um, Here's the, here's, the, here's the violation, right? Code of conduct, employees must obey all rules, regulations, and orders given by their supervisor. No shit, right? That's 3-1. 4.4, 4. employees shall not lie or make or allow any false report or false entry in a department official record. They should take their own advice, all right, and stop pointing the finger. See, you know, it's funny the way people... Often when they're pointing the finger, they actually reveal the very things that they're doing themselves, which is falsify records and falsify reports, right? Um, so, uh, so this is the accusation. You failed to follow orders when you filled out NOV blah 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 number uh, of violations need to have all information. You reported level MAEA. -E not KKRU, you should have reported. The agency is not ENF, it should have read 827. All right. So what she's doing is she's pointing out two uh, specific errors in this ticket. Now, again, I just told you I called in for assistance. I called in on the radio. It's all documented if you want to dis, you know, discredit that. Well, then pull up the, pull up the, the record pull up the audio record on the radio for that time and that uh, place, and we'll listen to it. And I guarantee you that I called in and I asked her for help. Did she show up? Of course not. She didn't show up. Right? 
So I'm, I'm left there to write the ticket myself. And I did the best I could. Right? I, I filled it out, I thought, in a way that I thought was proper. So I go back and I, I talk to um, Lieutenant, uh, the, the, the other supervisor, right? And um, uh, Hampton, right? Sergeant Hampton, right? I hand in my paperwork. I say, yeah, I did the best I can. This is what I got. That paper summons. He looked at it. He went, oh, it looks good, Conti. Great. Fantastic. That was the end of the story, right? So what does Fleetwood do? Fleetwood says, and I quote, you knowingly presented NOV with errors and not mention it to your supervisors. When asked, you admitted knowing there were errors and still gave in the copies. Look, it's it's a total lie, right? They're lying. She's lying on record, right? I never, I told, I call in, again, super agent calling in for help, not getting the help, doing the best they can in the situation, and have people like Pepe in, uh, in the background, you know, working Fleetwood to get the write-up, because they know I'm going to make a mistake, I'm a new agent, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't, I, I'm calling in because I need your help, and then rather than actually give the help, they see it as an opportunity to, right? That's what they're doing, right? So here's the other very, very interesting part of this. Now, this is this is the same this is the same supervisor. Again, total puppet, right? She has no mind of her own. She's following orders. Whose orders? Pepe, who's following Greenwood's orders, Pascal. They're all trying to get the write-up. Because why? Because I went into EEO and I complained. I told them about it. I told them about the corruption. I also told them about the ticket quota. Right? So but here's the interesting part. Look at this thing, right? This is from right out of uh, when I went into EEO. Apparently, they called this this character Fleetwood in to ask about my work. And what she said was, she added that when Conti was served with the write-up, the write-up that we're talking about, he refused to sign for receipt of it and claimed that it was his feeling that DSNY was bullying commercial establishments by issuing summonses. Bullying commercial establishment, establishments by issuing summonses. And that the sergeant's primary interest was in the number of summons, summonses he wrote. Okay, so the first part of that, bullying commercial establishments by issuing summonses, is not true. I never said that. If a commercial establishment has a blaring, you know, violation, like, you know, crap thrown all over the street, garbage thrown out on sidewalk... I never had a problem writing that summons. That's doing your job. That's seeing a, a grotesque violation of city ordinance and writing the summons, right? So I never, I never said that we were bullying all commercials. I said that they were, because of the quota, they were pushing the envelope on issuing summonses. That's exactly what I said. I said it right to her face. I said it to everybody's face. But, it, but here's the other part. Issuing... And that sergeant's primary interest was in the number of summonses he wrote. Yes, that's that's exactly right. She she's stating the truth that your I said to them, and I've always said, and I because I said it a month ago in 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 uh, EEO proceeding is that the primary purpose is to, to is for the sergeants to find out how many tickets you have. It's documented. It's in the 206 book. It's it's written on everybody's 144 form it's the primary it is it's in ortiga's audio it's the modus operandi of the organization which is to write tickets so by by her saying her like as if it was a disgrace to say it that the prime oh he's a, he's implying that my primary interest is in how many tickets he wrote yes that's exactly what it is so they, they're, they're, con, they're confessing they're inadvertently confessing so you know that's that's what you have, folks. So that's uh, another one of the many, the many fake write-ups. And I, you know, again, I hate to be the one to have to have reported. You know, you know the funny the funny part of that story is that one day I was uh, I was I was uh, she was assigned to be my supervisor, my one-on-one -on -one supervisor, Fleetwood, and and I I immediately went like this. Look, I'm not getting in the car. If she's driving, I'm not. I'm not getting in the car. I'm not getting in the car with someone that routinely goes out.
takes out a city car in that condition. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it, right? I don't care what you... Hold a gun. You want to hold a gun, a real gun to my head? Go ahead, because you're going to have to kill me to get in the car with this woman. Hard driving. So it turned out that I was driving. I felt okay about it. We had a lovely day. We went out. She even said, Conti knows what he's doing. He finds the violations. You know, she didn't... You know, so anyway. So, but that's that's for another story. So there's the, there's the write-up. There's the, the, the implication is that there was intent on my part to hide mistakes. Why would I do that? Why Could anybody tell me a motive why I would deliberately fill out, a, fill out a, a ticket wrong knowing that the ticket's going to get invalidated and I'm not going to get credit for that, you know, one of ten, right? It doesn't make it doesn't even make sense. Why would somebody do that? It, it they're doing it they're doing it for retaliation. So that's all for now. Peace out.